Harry and make it have officially lost the power struggle with King Charles, even after all their criticism and reality bombs, the Sussexes are on the losing side in the argument with the royal family. Hello and welcome to Royal Family News Channel. I look back with the blessing of 2020 vision, some new glasses and also the passage of time. There is something a little surprising about Harry's visit to Las Vegas on December 20th, Harry wasn't actually playing. Reports at the time said Harry spent the day drinking and swimming in the pool. How about playing blackjack, roulette or craps? Well, apparently, despite living in a town known for its gambling, Harry had never taken any chances at the time. It's like Harry sees game, but now, more than a decade later, and after the second infamous Harry Todger incident, I think we can say that Harry's riskiest bets have utterly failed. It seems that the house in the form of Buckingham Palace won here completely. Over the past two years, we've seen Harry and Meghan wage a relentless battle of wits and PR strategy against the company. But in fact, they have been unprofitable for the past two years. Meghan and Harry criticized Charles, the Queen, Camilla, William and Catherine and the institution of monarchy in general. Questions have reportedly been asked about the skin color of Meghan's unborn child, the titles were not awarded when they should have been awarded. Tears flowed. Apparently hugs were denied, Meghan was not taught manners, and some were blindsided by critical reports. The mental crisis had just been swept under the rug and of course that was when William knocked Harry down. So now after all this after about 40 hours. According to the Washington Post, from interviews and after 416 pages of a book and a very long documentary series, one thing is very clear, the royal family is working. Are they slightly bruised? Were you a little worried for a few minutes? There are some Meghan and Harry allegations about Prince Harry's family and the way the royal car operates that are easier to forget than others that have properly tarnished the House of Windsor. First, we hear that Meghan didn't get the support she needed when she was struggling with suicidal thoughts in her 20s. Then, of course, there's that infamous comment about the unborn cheese skin color. The mysterious royal wondered how dark her first child's skin would be. And it's possible that it was done while Meghan was there although comedian Chris Rock didn't think it was a big deal. However, the apparent indifference of the royal family and ignorance of the first members of the multiracial family does not make them look the best. In January, Harry made it abundantly clear what he expects from his father and brother in particular. While he took some time out from his new life in the US, Harry spoke to The Telegraph and Brian Gordon and said he wanted to take responsibility and apologize to my wife, addressing him directly, he also said, because you know what you did and I now know why you did it and you got caught. So just log in and then we can all move on. But Charles did not really make concessions to his son and Meghan. There was no apology and the royal family did not admit they had done anything wrong or that they could have done more to help. Just like the House of Windsor, Meghan weathered the storm without a hitch and they've officially made it to the other side, and that leaves Harry and Meghan in a difficult position. By now they had played all their cards and the king hadn't batted an eyelid. Even if Meghan and Harry were to offer new insults on an American talk show, I think the audience reaction at that point would just be a shrug. Harry looks a lot like the boy who cried wolf and Meghan too. They repeated the same things over and over again, and with each statement, the anger and rage of the audience decreased, when will they realize that this game isn't working so well for them? Despite this? Buckingham Palace is still going strong. King Charles is busy planning his first state visit to Germany and France. Queen Camilla also just received an enthusiastic crowd, William traveled to Poland to give a seminar on soft power, and this week Catherine contacted nine of the world's largest companies to help her with early work. So overall they're fine, Meghan and Harry's attacks don't really matter. A poll in the UK since the publication of Harry's backup book has put Charles at 62%, about the same as he was before his mother's death last September. Now, after his death, the rest of the Highnesses have gotten a bit of a boost in support, and William and Catherine have seen their approval ratings dip, but that's nothing to worry about. Harry and Meghan, on the other hand, were hit hard, they hit an all-time low in January and then hit an all-time low again in February. 
there is one statistic that really puts things into perspective. Camilla actually has a better America than Meghan or Harry, and of course Chris Rock wasn't the only comedian to be laughed at. Meghan and Harry Chelsea manager Trevor Noah and Jimmy Kimmel are all forgetting them, and of course South Park gave us an episode last month mocking them, and this week the publisher, Little Brown UK, claimed they were publishing a parody of Harry's book called Spare Us Now it's supposed to be released on April 1st so it might just be a practical joke and it looks like this is the price that Meghan and Harry have to pay for their palace feud that didn't really get a huge amount of PR ground their Netflix series. The UN, originally titled Harry and Meghan and Spare only confirmed people's understanding of everybody involved here, and it didn't really do much to move the dial. No hearts, no minds were swayed to Meghan and Harry's cause on either occasion, and it might be that Harry's trying to get some kind of a witch meant or even apology out of his family. But instead, he has ended up with an immovable palace, a king who is refusing to give in even an inch, and most people in the are simply tired of them. So it looks like Harry simply cannot win the campaign that he has been waging against his own family, poor guy this weekend. There are only more than 40 days left until his father's coronation. So will Meghan and Harry actually be there? Will Meghan show up in six-figure designer clothes? Will Harry draw a knife on his brother at this point? Unless you have a crystal ball or a very good psychic number one, no one can tell for sure at this point. Meghan and Harry appear to be losing the power struggle with Charles. Now there is something to consider. Maybe Harry should have taken a break from drinking with the Sarasota hen parties in 2012 and maybe tried then. Maybe he could understand that when you are not sure that you are not going to win, it is not a good idea to go all in and show your hand.